Hello, and welcome to Pressing Buttons. I'm Hugo. I'm Nick. Another great week, another great episode coming at you. Episode 96 of Pressing Buttons. Exciting week. Um, quick little announcement. Thanks, everybody. We've had some new uh, followers that have joined the Discord. We appreciate that. We're getting some traction somewhere. So <laughs> people are joining the Discord. Um, and uh, we're getting some more comments on YouTube. So appreciate everybody participating in, uh, in, the, in social media or, you know, our, our channels. We always appreciate it. We like growing the community. So shout out to everybody uh, who has joined and uh, spread the word. Pressing buttons. Good podcasts, mostly. Uh, have, have people join us. Go to pressingbuttons.gg, get the links, join the Discord, follow the YouTube, all that good stuff. And then, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Um, and I don't think Nick has anything else either. So <laughs> we're just going to jump straight in into some uh, video game news. And the first one that we got to talk about, I think, I mean, we've been excited the last couple of times uh, w with some video game announcements, obviously, like Final Fantasy stuff, Dragon's Dogma stuff. Um, but this one, because uh, of the title, which is Elden Ring. Um, for those of you guys who have been following the podcast for so long, uh, when we started two years ago, um, we started right around before Elden Ring uh, got released. So like we would not shut up about it. I think it was an Elden Ring podcast for the first uh, three months of, of uh, three or four months of 2022. 20, uh, so pretty, pretty fun stuff. Uh, from software announced the uh, Elden Ring uh, Shadow of Earth Tree uh, DLC. We had been known for a while that this was coming. Um, we were just waiting in anticipation, but you know, from software is one of those studios that definitely uh, likes to wait a bit, make sure everything's cooked right before uh, release. Um, they also said that they sold 23 million copies of Elden Ring, so that's pretty good. I, I believe it's their their highest selling title. Um, that's like 23 million more than Suicide Squad. All right, man. There's no need. <laughs> also, you don't you don't know that, because yeah, uh, we don't know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right, we'll we'll get the numbers later. Okay. This is why we need like an offhand producer to fact check your insults. To no, you. I just love saying shit, and no one, no one knows. Well, people know. Um, the DLC will be released uh, June 21st. It will be priced at forty dollars. Uh, you're basically going to be searching for uh, Michaela, uh, Melania's twin brother, um, you know, Elden Ring or just any Dark Souls, Bloodborne lore is very complicated. Uh, I still don't know what's going on kind of thing. If you, I was going to say like, I never got over this, just all the names and how it was unbelievably all like confusing they are. Yeah. It's all like M's. I think there's a couple of other like principles to the naming. And if you were to like just have like five, like somewhere between like five and ten, just like character profiles or just like images of characters, I would have like no idea. Or who's who? Or who's who? Well, <laughs> I know Millennia, that's the only one because, you know, obviously memorable. Um, Mog, too. So obviously with the Elden Ring lore, any any sort of from software title, they, they have so much lore, um, especially with, with them working with um, George R.R. R. Martin on this one. Um, they did say that uh, he kind of didn't have any input uh, on the on the DLC, on the new Shadow of Earth Tree DLC, but the input that he did have for Elden Ring itself is kind of being used here, so basically it's just extra stuff um but definitely uh, uh we'll put the the trailer in the in the in the show notes so you guys can check it out but you know not much to kind of decipher it's more elden ring which we loved uh, obviously uh game of the year um when when it got released uh great game overall um definitely brought a lot more people into the genre the soulsborne uh genre with how massive it was an open world um and, and just like word of mouth because honestly it's it's not an easy game to get into but the fact that uh, 23 million copies were sold goes to show you uh how well it was done and also you know how much people liked it um the trailer looks awesome the areas look awesome uh it looks like uh if, if you're familiar with the game uh the dlc map is going to be as large as Limgrave, which was a big area the the whole game itself was was huge um with, with a lot of crazy areas, crazy monsters, a lot of enemies look amazing. Um, definitely, like that's that's one of my favorite things about the 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 studio is their their enemy um, models. Like so many unique, 
weird looking or just badass looking uh, uh, enemies. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, Elden Ring uh, Shadow of Air 3 DLC? I've been, I've been waiting for it. Uh, the good news is we've had so many good games over the last one to two years <clears throat> that like I wasn't I don't know. I'm trying to think like earlier in the year we were like what's going on for the rest of the year and we had a pretty good idea about Q1 we had a few titles that we knew about in Q2 but I feel like this basically just ch checks the box for Q2 for me um, I think the other big titles maybe Stellar Blade yeah, and maybe like one. It's in April. But that um, was more, you know, it being a new it's, franchise it's, kind of it's, thing. It's, it's a different. Album. Yeah, yeah. So this and Final Fantasy fourteen, ex the expansion. Forgot about that. Like yeah. so, so the first so. Pretty quickly, like the first half of the year, is incredibly. And at Q one, we always knew it was going to be strong, but Q two is now looking solid to me. So, um. Yeah, I mean, the, I don't know if there's too much more to say. Like, it's it's a fantastic from software trailer. Um, no idea what's going on, but I love what I see. I have to watch the Vadividia like lore trailer, which is like forty minutes long. I'm like halfway through it. Um, you know who that is right. He's the YouTuber who does like all like the lore breakdowns yeah, for, yeah. from software. Yeah. So I'm too stupid to you know, basically figure out anything that's going on in these games and I need to watch his content to like actually like figure out what's going on. So I watched like the first twenty minutes of his forty minute breakdown of this I think it's like a three minute trailer. <laughs> so there's a lot there's a lot, you know, a lot to unpack. Uh, and I'm thankful that other people can do it for me. Uh so yeah. I don't know. I think I think that's it. I'm ready. That always surprises me, it. like how these YouTubers know all, all this lore shit, and I'm over here like, all right, you just and he and he, and he got that out. He got that out in like two days. Yeah, way 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 better uh, production than us. We we can't even <laughs> get a podcast out on time <laughs> ever. Yeah. Um, uh, and then yeah, I think I mean. This, I think this will be the first time I've experienced a From Software expansion or DLC as it was re like as it was released. Yeah, right off the bat. Which which would be cool for me because I think I was actually like a, a pretty late. It, w it really wasn't until quarantine happened when I went like deep into all the From Software games, um, save for like maybe Demon Souls, like a really long time ago. Um, so by the time I played those games, like all the, ex all the DLCs for those titles had already been out for a while. And I just kind of like played the game, you know, f fully completed. So, so I think this will be interesting to, you know, for me just to kind of go through that. Like what, what is a FromSoft DLC experience? And I think they have some specific mechanics that they've introduced to try to make that a little bit more compelling for people who've played like a thousand hours in Elden Ring are probably like so overpowered that they can go into this DLC and still have, you know, they're, they're not just like plowing through everything. Um, so I think they introduced, I think it's like Sekiro's, some the version of like the Sekiro. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, not the parry system, the, um, like the leveling system. Um, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, like, I don't know all, like all the specifics, but it's kind of like a, it's not like resetting, but it's like kind of resetting your power level just in the DLC world, um, which I think makes a ton of sense. So, because my character is like, so like I played the shit out of this game. So, my character is like basically one shots everything. So, then it's like, you know, how do you make that? How do you make the DLC engaging with people who have been playing this game so much? You, you become uh, Michaela and Millennia yourself. Um, one other very interesting thing is the price tag. So obviously, um, I don't know. I mean, you and I probably did the same thing. We didn't bat an eye when they were like, oh, $40 for this. <laughs> and How much did you pay for Suicide Squad? 
a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna. And I do not regret it. No, nobody forgets. I do. Nobody I forgets. do not regret it. But um, you know, with with the cost of DLC these days and the amount of content that we get treated with DLC, um, it's always a a bit of like, all right, should should we complain about the price if if the value is not there? And I don't think anybody complained at all. <laughs> about them saying $40 for this and you know the reason is because it's from software you know whatever DLC um, they are releasing we have enough faith in it where it'll be uh, some juicy content a lot of content um, and you get your money's worth obviously um, with Dark Souls uh, 2, Scholar the First Sin, uh, Sin uh, Bloodborne, um, I forget the name of the Bloodborne DLC but the Bloodborne DLC as well like it, it's what you expect. So I, I think that was very interesting that it was like, oh, $40. And everybody was like, yeah, that's, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> um, what'd you think of that? Did you, did you have any thoughts on that? No, I think, I think they probably, yeah, no, I think, I think $40 feels right. Like they, they probably can't charge like another, you know, full price title. But I think for some people they would pay for it just because people are, fanatical like probably including us <laughs> oh yeah just I like mean, absolutely absolutely fanatical about the game I mean, but they must on suicide squad yeah i guess i'll pay 70 dollars again for elder yeah. dlc uh but i think my only reserve like i just don't know how many have they announced how many dlcs they're doing I think they're just gonna do this one. Um, just this one. If it's yeah. just one, they did the same thing for me, me, for uh, Bloodborne. So it's I, I feel like okay because it it's, it'll be expensive enough where it'll hold over until whatever their next release is, is. Is why I think they they just did one. Okay. So if it's just one and it's pretty meaty and people feel good that there's like a lot of content, like I, I think they probably they probably could have charged more. Um. Not that I'm upset that they aren't charging more, but uh, you know, so I, I I feel really good about the the, the value proposition of it being forty dollars, and you know, there's probably going to be plenty of stuff to do, yeah. and it's not going to be like you know forty dollars three times. I think that was like my question, like if they had roadmapped multiple expansions and each of them were going forty dollars, then I would have more problem with it. But but you still would have paid if it's if it's one of <laughs> maybe yeah maybe. maybe. No, you I think you definitely still would have paid. But that's you know, it's it's a strategy, like I said, I, I think, you know, they're they're just like, all right, well that's why it took two years because we wanted to make sure it's right. We wanted to make sure it was a hefty DLC and then uh release it and then the next thing you gotta look forward from us is whatever next game we're working on. So Elden Ring two. No. Probably you don't think so? the, uh, no, I think they're they're gonna move on. Maybe do something, especially because the director is kind of looking to kind of hand the reins off, have somebody else direct it. So maybe maybe some a, a new franchise, some along the lines of Sekiro, which new, you know, obviously uh, Soulsborne, but something new kind of thing. Or bring me Dark Souls again. I would also be I would be okay with whatever. You know, I'm first in line. You're first in line. You're right next to me. We'll buy it uh, anyways. Um, they are also bringing back a poison swamp, which you know everybody loves. Those. Oh, I, I love I love poison swamps. Dude. <laughs> I love fun. it. I might I might I hate it. I hate I've I of course hated him, but then when I realized like that's that's like his mo is just like intentionally troll the shit out of people yeah. with like the most insane awful level. Yeah, it's. I'm like okay, I actually like this. Yeah, if you, if, it's one of my favorite parts of Demon Souls now. It's just like oh. the. Yeah, it's great. If you survive it, then you know you're you're, you're a true fan. Um, but yeah, we're we're excited to to see more of this. Um, we'll definitely uh, any news if we get more information on it. Obviously, we'll talk about it more. It's it's definitely one of our favorite uh, all time games. I think we had it on our list when when we talked about it. Um, just overall with how complete it was. Um, all right, and then the next thing we want to talk about is a couple fighting uh, game stuff. Uh, first off, we'll start with Capcom Cup 10. Uh, the tournament was held over the past, uh, I would say, two weeks. Um, they were doing like some uh, uh, qualifiers for for people who who, who entered um, to be able to get into the losers bracket. Then they also had they had the uh, top 16 from the the re, uh, 
the group uh, winners from the regions and stuff like that and group play and all that stuff. Um, as you know, especially uh, since since we've b been to Evo and we both bought uh, Street Fighters, we're not the greatest fighting game people, but uh, Street Fighter 6 is such an enjoyable game and easy to pick up and just a fun game overall. Um, we, we've we been following it uh, for, for a long time, um, ever since we went to Evo. Um, Uma, who is from Taiwan, won the million dollar prize, so congrats to him. Um, very it, he, he's not an unknown obviously he won uh his, his region and he was there um you know he's been good or whatever but it sometimes it takes these type of events for the spotlight to kind of shine uh, on these uh uh lesser known players not a lot of the top players were in in the top 16 a lot of them got eliminated i know the group stage was very brutal with with the seating kind of thing a lot of strong players were put in in the same group so you know basically uh fighting each other out and eliminating uh, the top. Uh, the loser was Chris Wong, um, who is a big uh, player that everybody knows. Um, I think overall the the event itself was successful, um, especially it being the first time that they do the, the $1 million prize, which they'll do again for next year. Um, I think people just had problems with the organization of the end of it. Uh, one being that they did like an immediate interview with the loser, which is kind of like, it's weird. I know it's, you know, you can never, never interview the loser, dude. Well, you know what it it's, is. It's, I get it a little bit because I've watched, you know, obviously watching a lot of sports and stuff like that. Um, whether it's, it's baseball, football, basketball, whatever. Um, after a certain amount of time, you know, the, the winners celebrate, then they do like a interview for the, the losers coach. So I can understand that aspect of it. You kind of want to get the, the, the rawness of it and, and the feelings out there. And it, might make it for, for good content, but because everything was kind of rushed where it was like right away, like that just feels kind of weird. Um, and especially with the gaming community, the FGC community, there's certain things that like they still got to work on to kind of make it, <laughs> make it, make it work. Cause this, this yeah, the, the, this I think, I think there's, there's no, you know, media training or anything like that for, for a lot of these players. So I feel like that's no, one, no one's went in by immediately going to one of these like you know top fgc guys who who just didn't win a million dollars yeah you would not like be ask. surprised if it went insane <laughs> yeah 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 uh so but i think if yeah. if obviously with the fgc uh getting as big as it is getting um and getting more uh widely known obviously mortal kombat um selling so well uh tekken 8 releasing and selling so well and street fighter 6 uh selling so well as well and and the hype and and fanness of it i think um, it's time for the community to kind of grow and, and get better at doing these things, especially if they want to keep that growth um, and, and be more mainstream. So I think th th those were the couple things. Uh, the, the the winner highlight too at the end, I, I felt it was was kind of rushed. Um, but overall, great tournament. I think uh, uh, um, it definitely uh, brings a spotlight and it makes people look more forward to uh, the next event, the next one would be, well, the next big event would be uh, EVO Japan in April. Um, then you have EVO uh, in, in Vegas uh, in, in August and stuff like that. Um, and then the next Capcom Cup. So su super excited for that. And also uh, just more eyes on, on new players. Um, get, get more favorites um, and, and get the game more well-known. I'm excited to try Ed, who's one of the new character, uh, the, new, the next character that's going to be released, I believe, uh, tomorrow uh, he's getting released um, and there's also going to be a, a balance update so I'm excited to get into all things of that and, and kind of see what the community thinks because I mean I haven't played Street Fighter in a bit um, but like I want to play Street Fighter and I know you do too you got to start somewhere yeah I know I know we want to get back into I it just, gotta... I just, I just want to play video games yeah well, we need to get back into it. We could need be to, any. Could be any. We need to train up so when we when we enter a tournament. Um, your thoughts on Capcom Cup Ten? I didn't. I couldn't finish it because it started too late. That was the other thing. It, it was. It was. It was, it was a tough. Long. It was a tough. A tough um, time zone situation for those in Europe and the East Coast. Yeah, you had top sixteen losers, the top sixteen winners, and it's 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 just a lot. It's a lot. So I think I I think I got through like a third of of like top eight. Uh or no 
I think it was no top sixteen. Like it was, I don't know. It was like so. I only got like maybe like halfway through the last many many hours uh, of, of of the tournament. So, so yeah, I, I was just like I just kind of give up, and a lot of my favorite players weren't in it anymore. So I was just kind of like, is it really worth staying up to watch this? And I didn't. <laughs> so I just, I just woke up and you know in my Google News feed it was like the top thing like Uma Uma wins. And you saw that Luke got yeah. beat by a jury and you were like, yes, fuck Luke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, so there's that. So you know, you're never gonna win with. Um, so it's not like a criticism of the tournament. It was just kind of unfortunate that like the time, the timing of it didn't work well for me. Um, but that's the challenge of you know a global. A global tournament. Well, you could also say uh, you can't appease everyone. You could also say, speaking from experience of us hosting a Destiny PvP tournament that was supposed to be like two hours that turned into six hours or something. That was that was specifically you being an idiot. Yeah, but it was funny, and it was funny because it was actually in, uh, now now I can appreciate that it was funny, but in the moment I was genuinely furious. You know, you know, and it's all captured on yeah, it's it's on our YouTube, on our YouTube channel. On YouTube. Yeah, the funny thing is like this. It's wasn't I doing something? Oh, it was no, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Capcom Cup. I was I was like, hey, watch Capcom Cup, and you're like, hey, let's do this fucking two hour Destiny tournament. I'm like, okay, fine. And then it was like literally the entire length of Capcom Cup. Yeah, good good times. You piece of shit. Good times. Um, you know, so that that that, that was kind of unfortunate. I think. Yeah, like none of my player, like none of my like favorite players or people who I really enjoy watching, um, weren't in it. And I think that was just like maybe equally part, equal parts like bad luck with the drawing of things, like of just like where people got placed in the brackets, and then also, um, I don't know. I think I think there's just like there's a lot of there's a lot of new young blood out there, or people who, uh, maybe even they're not so young, but they're just people are getting in into Street Fighter. I think the prize pool certainly was a contributor to that. Um, so that's one thing I want to talk about was the the fact that they're doing another million dollar prize pool. I thought it was actually pretty surprising. Um, I thought that might have been more of like a one and done, like just try to get people. You know, it's basically like a marketing tool, of like just get people into the game. Uh, Obviously, like casual people probably don't care, but like if you get like competitive people into it, then they potentially like bring their audience along with that, and that's where you get like more casual people as well. So, so yeah, I mean, I, th I think the fact that they're doing it again either means that this game makes a, a lot of money and a million dollars. So well, I guess it's actually like two million dollars, right, in the total price pool, and then yeah, with, for just the a other, million for the other winners, like. Some like 300k, that, so. 100k. Yeah, I always, yeah. I mean, I always thought like these games make a lot of money. Like, I always thought the price pulls for, and I know like fighting games aren't as big as like League of Legends or whatever, but even so, I always felt that there was a lot, a lot more room to increase the price pools. So, this actually feels, feels appropriate without knowing like all, all the actual information, but something like that I think makes sense. Um, and I think the fact that they're doing it again is is a good thing. And but I'm still a little a little surprised because I would have expected them to kind of cheap out and just be like, ah, it's a million dollars, and then it's a million dollars. It, it goes away for everybody. So the the real winners only getting like two hundred dollars or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I thought they would have decreased the entire you know price pool, but. That's cool. Yeah. It's so gonna, that's a good thing. It's going to be an interesting year, too, because this will be the first full year where you have Tekken 8, Street Fighter 6, and Mortal Kombat 1 uh, fully released. So um, we, we can see if, if the other developers kind of follow suit, uh, the other studios kind of follow suit with, with these type of tournaments. Um, but definitely uh, the, the FGC community is on the up and up. Um, yeah, I feel like I could, be, I could be wrong, but I know NL is... He was always like a Tekken guy, and maybe he like dabbled yeah. in Street Fighter as well. But now he he was like, I don't know where exactly where he plays, but he was, he's he like, was play, up there, like 
He's up there. He's placing in Capcom Cup, and I, that like that must be the prize pool, right? Because the money is so much more in that in this game than it is in Tekken. Yeah, yeah. So definitely the the fan base is there, the promotion is there. So we, I think we'll definitely see a a higher stake, especially with the the rise of esports um, again, where it's not just like you said, where it's not just league kind of the being the face of it. Um, the other fighting game thing, speaking of League, is uh, League of Legends. Um, so the game formerly known as Project L has finally uh, found its real name. And it's, so I'm going to say it a couple ways because they, I actually haven't seen the video of them saying the name. So I don't know which way it is. It's either going to be 2XKO. It's going to be 2KO with the X sign like they do in japan um or two times ko so i don't know which one it is which one sounds better for you out of all those which one do you like more i think i like two times I, ko I, I don't i think it's two x ko well it's just weird to say two x ko but anyways uh the 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 final name is uh two x ko spelled like that um, it's launching in 2025. Um, they are super excited. They, they just kind of, you know, did a video showcasing uh, the characters uh, that they've uh, revealed so far um, and saying that they will be uh, moving forward. There'll be um, uh, much, many more uh, fighting game community events to showcase the game. Uh, you can sign up for the play test if you want, so you can try to get into it. Um, and definitely, uh, it's it's really hyped because obviously um, Riot, uh, being as popular as they are, being in the in the uh, League of Legends scene, the esports world, and how big League of Legends is and and them trying to expand the league of legends worlds in, into other media uh we know they're doing an mmo game there's various uh different types of genres uh, uh of games that they've already made um and then with their announcement uh last year that they were doing a fighting game uh definitely definitely uh pushes it i think this is definitely beneficial for the community uh, for the fgc community just because it gives them more tension. Uh, it gives something different. The game itself is a 2v2 uh, fighter. Um, so you could basically just have two player versus two player, which is, I don't think it's off the top of my head. I can't think of any game that is like this kind of, that, that's being done. Very uh, interesting concept uh, of a game. The game looks good. Um, the character uh, models. Mortal, Com Mortal Kombat, kind of? Yeah, but I'm saying like, where you. Where you can control two different players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, thing? it's usually a 3v3. No, no, but I'm saying like... Or, you mean like two it's, it's humans? Four people, like yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, four yeah, people okay. total uh, kind of thing. So that's, that's going to be interesting. I'm pretty sure uh, some friendships will end. Uh, knowing how toxic uh, regular League of Legends is, I can't imagine how toxic this is going to be, but... When you, when you watch these trailers, are you... So, because you're an actual... League of Legends fan, yeah, and I am not, yeah. So like, I'm just a person who likes fighting games, and I see the game, I'm like, oh, that looks. Don't really know who these characters are, but it looks amazing. Yeah. But from your perspective, like, do you have that added appreciation of, like, so you know all these characters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, 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 yeah. there's no new characters. Uh, well, no characters that aren't in in the regular League of Legends uh, MOBA. They're all they're all established. Um, and obviously, with them trying to, you know, be doing the arcane TV show, they're kind of trying to simplify the lore and kind of make it more understandable for everybody and kind of clear up any kind of uh, loose thread so it like i'm excited to see these characters in this and excited to to see how they're incorporated into a fighting game franchise because that's the other thing too um it it's not gonna be everybody obviously they're not gonna put 150 or whatever it is league of legends characters and also you know it's not like some like guilty gear where you know they're gonna have like their biggest characters that take up a whole screen kind of thing it, it looks like they're going for a certain more human the, the humanoids we haven't seen anything that's like a monster or whatever or not a humanoid that they have from from league of legends so yeah i'm i'm, I'm just excited overall to see it i might not i probably won't play it because i suck at it um i suck at fighting games street fighter i'm good with just sticking with with street fighter 6 but it, it's definitely something if done right where i feel like i'll, I'll be watching it a lot and they're, they're pushing it a lot i think they they realize the, the potential of it and how much money it can make them and how popular it could be um, because they already have that uh, on the League of Legends MOBA side. So obviously they 
want to push it in, into the fighting game community side. So, yeah. Your, your thoughts on this, on their money push, their the game. I know you saw you saw the, the brief trailer, right? Yeah. No, I mean, I think the game looks great. I'm just more, which maybe you, you won't find surprising, but the business model of the game, where I think this is like the first... It's it's got to be the biggest budget fighting game that's going to be free to play. Yeah, that that's an uh, interesting concept. So, and to me, I just wonder if there's like a business model mismatch with free to play and and fighting games. Uh, so that's that's what I want to see. I I think... Is, is, I think I think they might be overgeneralizing what works with League of Legends to a fighting game? No, I think I think there is, um, but it's more of the studio um, that's doing it and the game that's doing it because obviously League of Legends is free to play. So they already kind of know how it works for the model and they still make crazy, crazy money on all their passes and stuff like that. So obviously it's, it's going to be some sort of pass to get skins, to get banners, to get all that stuff. And and the free model works. Um, I, I've gotten a lot of free stuff off of the regular League of Legends skins. For League of Legends? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I feel like... Does it, does it work for a fighting game? Well, that's what we'll see. Cause, uh, that's, my que- that's my question. Because, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, Multiverses it, didn't work for that, but that was kind of in beta. Yeah, it's, know, it's War- that's whatever. Warner Brothers. They don't, know, yeah. they, don't know, they don't know what's going on with live service games. Then you have uh, Brawlhalla, which is a smaller scale. This is definitely the, the biggest, most budgeted, like it's, you said. So I, I have a, a distinction between Brawlhalla, which is more of like a party. That's more of like a party fighting game. So is Multiverses. Um, Versus like what I would call like a core fighting game, which is what Two XKO and you know Street Fighter and those games. So, and then again, not that I, you know, I just I just don't know. Like I'm I'm that's like I'm more curious about whether that actually is successful. Um, because I'll definitely try the game, but I'm just like not really dialed into the League of Legends universe. So. Is I'm it, sure. Just, I'm it, sure. Just like you, I'll, I'll probably just you know my my fighting game itch will be scratched with with Street Fighter. Um, if but, it's free, why not? Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll try it, but I I just I just wonder like long term whether that that model can actually work for a fighting game. Um, because all like most fighting games are effectively live service games; they just charge. They they just bundle all the content and they charge a lot of money for it. Well, as long as they don't charge like a hundred dollars for character costumes, like Capcom did, I think they'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so very interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, any more information that's coming out, um, we'll keep an eye on it. And any more Capcom stuff, uh, Capcom Cup. Street Fighter news as well. I'm excited to try Ed uh, whenever he releases. And then uh, now we just got to wait for Akuma. I could see you being an Ed main. Yeah, he, he looks fun. He looks fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll probably suck with him, but he, look, he looks fun to, to try. Especially the, the feedback. What, happen, what happens if they, what if they do Hugo? I don't think they'll do Hugo because he's big. I don't think they're going for that aesthetic, uh, like, like a Hugo birdie aesthetic. I don't think like they're going for those type of characters. What do you mean? Like Marissa Zangief? Yeah, but those those are like regular characters. I don't know. I feel like Hugo's crazy Bert. and, and Birdie's is also crazy and weird. Uh, I don't I, I don't know if you get what I mean, like in, in terms of the style that they're going for. I, I don't feel like these type of characters would fit in in, in this world of Street Fighter. Maybe. Of like the graffiti part of it or, or, or whatever, like like the the coolness of it. I mean, it's not like Abigail. Ab- I think you were thinking about Abigail. Abigail Isn't was the like with the with the cheetah print and the curly he hair. Was, yeah, he's 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 like tall, but he's not like he's not like Ab- Abigail. was like the the fucking like absolutely enormous like huge character with like the the, the like through like tires and was super annoying. Yeah. I mean, the biggest characters are right Birdie, now. Birdie is just very fat, so I don't I don't know. If, it's it, it's the fatness 
sorry, we're not fat shaming, but just just the the model itself and like the way he walks, it's just weird. I think I think they're going for a coolness level where it's like these characters do not exude cool. Blanca. Well, he looks more human. He he they they they. I think that's one of my my favorite things of this one that they've like it's Street Fighter, but it could be something else with the characters. It's it's totally new characters. Case in point, Ed wasn't really well liked <laughs> in five and now you know with with the trailer and, and the way he looks and the moves and stuff like that i i, I feel like he's gotten a, a really good uh reception which makes me excited for akuma yeah i mean everybody yeah. loves akuma but to see akuma in this style and, and what he does so can't wait to see that but yeah a uh, little little side uh street fighter stuff all right um next thing we want to talk about is the nintendo direct Nick's favorite sections every time we do these. Um, honestly, we're going to talk about it, but... It's More like, like Nintendo neglect. Nintendo, Nintendo don't do this. Uh, it's It, it was a, a basically a partner showcase. Uh, nothing major to announce. Um, they do have a Pokemon showcase tomorrow, so that should be interesting because th there's really nothing Pokemon related that uh, that's coming out in the future that they have. So th that, th they're, just, they're just trying to react to pal world yeah be like, hey guys we're still the listen if, if the poker... we still have we still have pocket monsters if they get the guns imagine they announce them with guns tomorrow <laughs> and we go, break the internet break the internet yeah um but they did a partner did, show now didn't we make this joke before it's like hey guys it's pal world but with no gun <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe they, they make that joke that would also break the internet it's like oh nintendo's yeah. being funny yeah. Um, yeah. So they did a partner direct, which is basically them showing off uh, indies and, and other games that their partners are making. Uh, pretty fun stuff. We'll just go down through a list real quick, and, and you know, I'll, I'll say a couple that I feel like I was interested in look good to me, and you can say maybe the one that was interesting to you. <laughs> um, obviously, the first one, the, the the first couple ones were grounded and Pentiment uh, coming to Nintendo Switch. We talked about this last week uh, with the Xbox uh, partnership. So whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoever's been waiting whoa. for that, Beb and I don't know why I've never I've never been able to play these games before. Well, first of all, I don't know why you're reacting like that. You played grounded i don't know if you i think you guys enjoyed it for like the game, five the ten game, minutes and the game you know, sucked, dude. <laughs> don't tell that to the nintendo people they're excited for it um you had ender magnolia bloom in the mist coming uh summer 2024 that looked pretty interesting uh a ranger uh that's coming 2024 that's a puzzler um unicorn overload uh which is the new game from vanilla ah, vanilla wear um always super excited for that that looks amazing uh, Monster Hunter Stories, uh, releasing in uh, summer 2024. Uh, Disney Epic Mi Mickey Rebrush, uh, releasing in 2024. Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance, releasing June 21st. Uh, remaster. More important. More importantly, coming to other platforms. Well, I don't. We don't gotta steal Nintendo's. So I, I. So I bought the deluxe edition of Shin Megami Tensei Five on Nintendo Switch. It, I played it for 30 <laughs> seconds. I played it for literally 30 seconds, and I'm like, I cannot play this game so you're because the bu performance is so bad. So you're going to buy it on something else? I'm going to buy it on PC, yeah. All right, so then I just want to say earlier you were shitting on me because I spent $100 on Suicide Squad. Is this like the same? Would you say it's the same? I feel like it's the same. It's not the, it's not the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's not the same. Because <laughs> now you're. It's st I'm still. It's still stupid. I mean, they're both. They're both equally stupid, but for different reasons. All right, but all right, stupid. I'll take. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> as long as you admit that you're stupid, that's all I care about. You're as stupid as I am. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, then you have Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection that's releasing March 14th. Uh, Sword Art, uh, Sword Art Online Fractured Daydream releasing in 2024. Gundam Breaker 4 releasing 2024, Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble releasing June 25th, shout out to Ali, I'm pretty sure he'll be super excited about that, um, World of Goo 2 releasing May 23rd, um, Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time releasing October 10th, another Crab's Treasure releasing April 25th, as you can tell, the further down it gets, the wackier the names are and stuff penny's big breakaway uh out today suica game multiplayer mode expansion which is like this fruit game where you gotta match the fruits that turn into bigger fruits and then it's like tetris but with fruits um pepper grinder <laughs> march 28th uh pocket card jockey uh out on switch today contra 
Operation Galuga, March 12th. Very interesting. I was a big Contra guy when I was, you know, early Contra guy. Uh, there's some rare games coming to the Switch, like Battletoads, Killer Instinct, uh, and others. Um, Endless Ocean, Luminous, made second. Um, Demon Slayer game coming out soon. Kingdom Come. Uh... I'll start, well, I'll say, the, the, the ones that kind of piqued my interest, Contra, obviously, I, I, I like Contra, you know, I, I like the gameplay of it, so that kind of piqued my interest. Um, and then the Vanillaware game, obviously, being a big fan of Odin Sphere and all that stuff, uh, Unicorn Overload looks really good. The art style is always uh, top-notch from, from everything that they release, um, so I'm excited to try the demo. There's a demo out today. It, I don't believe it's releasing anywhere else, so... Uh, maybe PC. I'll have to check that out. Uh, any Anyone's kind of piqued your interest? Anything like that? Nah. Damn, I thought you said you had one. No, I mean, there was one... I was more just like I made the connection of... I saw a game trailer that kind of looked like a Persona-type game. I already forgot what the title was, but... I'm like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. And then it's like, oh, it was revealed in, in the Nintendo Direct. So, All but right. um, right, I I'll... think I'm, 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 I'm good. Maybe, uh, maybe the Vanillaware game that that'll definitely be on other consoles. Like, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be Switch exclusive. So, like, maybe that. But I got you. I got you. I'm just, I'm just Switch to maybe if they would announce the new Silk Song. Hollow Knight Silk Song. I, no, I, I don't. Get, I don't care. No, I don't care about. I don't care about. That. All right, I'll say it for uh, you, man. Nintendo. Step your game up. Switch to. I think. I think it's just that it's like new the, first party. New first party games. Like I'm. I don't care about all this other stuff that I can already play. I could have played three years ago, or when it comes out, I can play it on something else that. I like at a decent frame rate. So. Yeah. Well, that that was the main thing. There, there's more rumors and stuff and information on the Switch too. We didn't want to discuss it because it's not a lot of information, and you know, it's not something that we've that we haven't heard before. Um, we're we're waiting to get more solid stuff before we discuss it. But yeah, that's probably the big driving force where it's like, uh -huh, we're just waiting till the summer so we can say that we're getting the Switch too, and these are the games that are going to be coming out for it. So apparently, it's. Early 2025 early, early is 2025. the potential release date. So, yeah. so you know there's going to be either Mario or Zelda, most likely Mario, or Metroid. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll keep an eye out for any Nintendo Switch games that Nick might want to It's It's got to be Mario, right? Probably Mario. Yeah, most likely Mario. I think I feel like Metroid's just in development hell. Yeah. Hey. Zelda just came out. Just maybe cooking. they'll do. Maybe they'll, they might have like an updated version of Those Zelda, of but it, yeah, I bet it'll be Tears of the Kingdom. Listen, let Nintendo cook. They just cook, and they cook for the right amount of time. Also, they're doing it so you know to make sure there's enough switches because of the last one. It was very popular. Um, all right, so that was it for all the news that we wanted to discuss this week. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts on these, make sure you guys go to our Discord, uh, which you can get through our website, pressingbuttons.gg, and let us know uh, what news you found exciting this week, or if we missed anything that you wanted us to discuss, which we won't discuss, but, well, we will discuss on the Discord, not on the next episode, because that's a pet. Whatever. Just discuss. <laughs> Let's move on to some closing thoughts. Um, I'll start off. I, and I was telling you. Did this, you do anything? Yeah, I was telling you before we started recording that, like, I feel like I'm a horrible video game podcaster because I'm not gaming as much as I as I used to. Um, just because I've been working and, a lot. And you think and you think that's just because you haven't been playing video games? Yeah. <laughs> so, I need to play video games so I could have a video game podcast. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. But the, you know, there's that, other reasons that you're a horrible video game master, but all right. Uh, no, I feel like I'm a good one. Um, the only, the, the only the only thing we, uh, I really played was uh, Hell Divers Two. We did it for game night. Still having a lot of fun. Uh, definitely, uh, you guys got more more out of the game. Like you, you know. Oh yeah, no, that's a that's a slam dunk yeah. game night. A anytime, it's so easy. You kind of forget about it. Like what what you're it, doing. But I don't know like, if it's as I think it's like in the same class as like Rocket League. Yeah, just a different kind of hilarity. 
Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a completely different game, but I mean, in terms of like, most people can play it. You can just kind of pick it up, do a thing. I, like maybe it's like the missions take longer than a Rocket League match, so it's I don't know. So maybe it's not like as accessible, but I feel like it's kind of in that same category of like everyone has a good time. It's it's fun, easy to play. Fun dumb fun dumb stuff happens. Yeah. We found out you don't know how to throw a grenade for shit. So that's no. Funny. I got I got I got specifically smoked twice because of like some. And then I got smoked by little, the grenade you were throwing. So yeah, 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 yeah. friendly fire. Um, it's definitely nothing but net. The 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 way I see the fun of it, and and this is the ultimate test of fun, was that we did two forty minute missions and we failed <laughs> both of them, but it was still fun. Like I wasn't disappointed or anything like that. I didn't even. I didn't, I didn't. I didn't even know. Like I was just like, yeah, whatever. Let's do another one. Yeah, like, like, who cares? Like that. That's that's how fun it was. That we failed both missions and we were just getting destroyed by the bugs. And then the, the fucking the robots, robots, dude. Those are, robots are bullshit, dude. Yeah. Um, and that one fucking chainsaws. And that one giant ass bug that we didn't even know we were gonna fight. But it was it was, it was fun. That's that's what makes it fun. I think I think that's how I know that that the game is fun. That we were there for basically eighty minutes and didn't accomplish anything, but fun was had. Um, the other thing was it was your birthday last week. So happy birthday. Guys, uh, if, if you're still listening, whenever you listen, make sure you wish Nick a happy birthday on the Discord. He loves that shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he loves that shit. Hey, you know me. We, we've been so long. And yeah, yeah he, he just loves you, you just know, you attention. know me so well. Uh, but yeah, we had, we had drinks with a good group of friends uh, who are also on the Discord. Um, good, good times. And then we had some curry. And then you you hated that I didn't want the curry sauce on the curry, but that's another thing. It, but it was good curry, katsuhama. It down, was like down in Midtown. We, so we, we had like we had like we had like nine. Everyone ordered a curry, except you. I ordered curry on the side. You you always gotta when when there's things like that. I always like it on the side because I can control the amount that i get so that that was my main thing especially because when we had it in japan uh you were like super hyped about it and i felt bad because i was like all right this is it's all right it's not mind-blowing like it is to you yeah i'm sorry all right. I wanna, I'm, I'm punching you <laughs> so hard next time next time that that'll be your birthday uh present. no that's not a yeah no present. it was it was a good it was a good night it was a Fairly impromptu get together, but uh, yeah, that's my favorite restaurant. I, I, I maybe I won't say favorite, but it's definitely like, and it's not like a nice trendy place, it's just like it's a place that serves katsu curry that yeah. I think is like actually a really good katsu no, curry. No, it's, so. it's a, yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's I mean, basically, I had fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah with sauce on the side with curry sauce on the side yeah, yeah. but it's, it's, it's how amazing. many bowls of rice did you eat just one this time oh, okay because i've been eating better <laughs> mm. all of you go five bowls of rice that would have been five bowls of rice yeah. yeah uh yeah it was a good time um what games have you played this week you just uh final fantasy demo you played that right was that two weeks ago or a week ago? I don't even remember. Well, you it was two weeks ago for the first part, but you had you, you're not. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Part. No, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't play the second part because nothing carries over. Well, I thought I to wanted to get game. your input on it because I know one of your concerns was the performance mode. Was it the perform for performance mode? So, and they did an I update. Was, I was I wasn't that concerned, but it. it was something that I was just like. There's a performance mode. It's it's an actual performance mode, and that the frame rate is higher and stable. Uh, the image quality definitely was like a little dodgy, and then uh, pretty much everyone immediately was like all over this and like, oh my god, like the image quality is shit and sucks, and play it on the fidelity mode. Uh, 
And I'm like, yeah, like I just I just need the higher smooth frame rate. Like that's just how I am, particularly with games that are a little bit more maybe maybe in like certain areas of the game I would have like switched it over and then if I was like gonna be doing a lot of battling and stuff, I would have wanted it in performance mode, but um and then I think you asked the question, it's like, oh yeah, like they'll they'll just probably fix that before the full game. And I'm like I I I don't think like I don't think so. Like that seems well, they, pretty hard. They, pretty hard to do, but then they they did like they, did they it for the you know uh, so allegedly yeah alleged, the allegedly that they've addressed some of the issues, some of the image quality issues with the performance mode uh, in the demo and then also in the full game. So, um, so I haven't. Maybe that was your question. Like if I went back into the demo to see if it was better, I did not do that. I just. I wasn't uh, that upset about it like some other people. So, so which just goes to show, like so pe- you know, pe- uh, it goes people have different preferences. No, it, it shows well, no, 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 it, from Final Fantasy sixteen. To no, no, Final Reaper. Fantasy sixteen. <laughs> Final Fantasy sixteen was a, in my opinion, like from my perspective, or really, at least in terms of like what I look for, like the performance mode was very, very bad because it was not a stable frame rate. It was like a very volatile frame rate, which made it kind of like defeats the whole purpose of of having that. Gotcha. Um, so it just depends. Like for for me, it's like I'll take the image hit, image quality hit for a better solid frame rate. But but I know not everyone, you know, they just want it to look cool. All Always. Right. All right. Well, can't wait to to hear you uh, your thoughts on Final Fantasy Friday. Rebirth on Friday. You know, big big release. Uh, D- are, you, are you doing your ritual? Well, my, my ritual is Katsuhama, yeah. but I've had a hard time getting into the city as of late with, just with everything going on. So, so I just got as just Best Buy is mailing me a copy. Oh, <laughs> so it's it's kind of lame, but you know, it'll be easier logistically. Yeah. Uh, what about Infinite Wealth? Well, th- that's what I was going to mention. I did. Uh, I got five. I have a five star resort Damn, at bro. Dodenko Island. Yeah. Mm. So I think my playtime is thirty something hours. Thirty, mm. almost forty hours. But that's ha- but, but half that's, of it, over yeah. half of it is yeah. the island for sure. Do you do you, um, do you know what chapter you're on? Of the like, what chapter is that yeah. of the of the no. Of the game, no. Okay. I the moment the island was made available to me, I never left. So, like, that's if you just search like which chapter yeah. can you get access to the island? Like, I haven't left that chapter yet because gotcha. I'm pretty sure it's like an an, an early chapter because you're supposed to basically leave it. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no, I like, know. No, we're staying and we're finishing it, and then we're not and I found until some. The end. I found some brothers in arms online, uh, mainly like just like random like Reddit threads or whatever, where people were like, "If I can get get on the island, and I had to get it to five stars before I could leave." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, got sucked in." That's me. Uh, but yeah, it's just you know, if if you're into those types of games, it's basically like Animal Crossing and Dreamlight Valley, and you know. Lego Fortnite to a, to a certain extent, um, maybe substantially less building, but um, you know it's like that that kind of game. So uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Like just the the Yakuza spin on that formula was like entertaining. It definitely got it probably went on a little too long for me. Like getting getting a stars. Like I kind of wish there was like. That was shortened a bit. It's because you were so, in there the whole time. <laughs> well, no, no. I think like how should I say this? I feel like they made it like the big milestone is getting to like three or four stars. Then you could you, then you feel like you can leave and then come back. But because they made all this like hoopla around, you just wanted to be five star. Just say I think that. Just I think that. actually I think actually in terms of the story. The island used to be a four star resort, so maybe some people would interpret it as like just get it back to four stars and you're done. But <laughs> but you can't they just always they, they just always had five five stars, five stars, five stars. So 
Right. So now I've done that, and then there's I think there's like plenty of other stuff. Um, all these like little like missions and things to do, and then I think there's ways of like getting a ton of resources, you know, basically like money and and other things um, from it as well. So now the I feel like the big question is: Are you gonna try to kind of go through it before final fantasy rebirth or you're gonna do both double dip what what's what's your thoughts nah, on that it's gonna be it's gonna be tough um i'm gonna i mean there's no way i'm beating the game before rebirth comes out so it'll have to be i just move to rebirth and i'm definitely prioritizing rebirth over infinite wealth just given my already existing hype and then like all of the like insanely overwhelming uh of the game and then like all the trailers and stuff like it just looks insane so so I'll definitely be moving you know migrating to that that'll be my primary game and then I'll have to go back to infinite wealth grand blue uh and dragon's dogma is around the corner yeah dude, I might I might have to just like pass on that one for a while we'll see it's a, it's a good first uh, quarter of the year we're, we're having fun we have we have things to play which is always well i'm not yeah. playing anything which is sad uh but we have the things <laughs> but no time to play them. no time to play it's it's funny i just thought that like i think this is the one of the very few times where like you're playing games or you played a game and i'm like i can't i'm not playing much <laughs> so i feel a little bit sad. yeah what are you doing just working out and stuff, you know. I'm getting buff. No, I'm I'm doing a lot of work shit and my firefighter shit uh, that I gotta focus on. So, I've just been tired a lot. Just some shit with a side of shit. Yeah, but it's life. Uh, it'll get back on track hopefully soon. And I do can... you wanna come over here and get some margaritas? Watch a watch a, watch a baby. Oh no, I, I thought two, you were gonna... two two dogs. I thought you we were can gonna... get margaritas yes. too, but I, I you gonna... gotta primarily watching the baby and the two dogs. Yeah. But... yeah. I thought you were going to say, five burrow, I'm in. Bring the baby, bring the dogs. I had it yesterday. Oof. Don't, don't, oh, my God. All right. I think, that, I think we should end the episode because now I'm getting upset. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, make sure you guys check out our website, pressingbuns.gg, so you can get the link to our Discord. You can join the Pressing Buns community, a very thriving community that's growing uh, little by little, but it's growing. Um, and then you can get all our links to everything else. Um, thanks. We'll see you guys on the next episode. I'm Hugo. Bye. I'm Nick. Later. <laughs>